people voting for the winner. It's not like a hundred thousand. Well, you know the process. They have yeah, to like go through a. They, they have to go through like winter storms and. Sh so welcome everyone who's joining us. Uh, Durham Paths Potpourri, and we're starting with this slide, which um, dermatoscopically was suspicious for Belmont in situ. What we see is a bulbous Reedy pattern, concentric fibrosis, round to oval nest that tips and sides of Reedy, sparing of the arches, so like a um, dysplastic or Clark's nevus. But you have involvement more diffusely within Reedy, which is a pattern of a young Clark's nevus. So young Clark's nevus will often look worse dermatoscopically because they, rather than being well defined into nests at the tips and sides of Reedy, they are more diffuse within the Reedy, but there's nothing in the upper portions, it, nothing in the arches, it just skips Reedy to Reedy but with a less nested involvement of the Reedy, and that is a recognizable pattern of a young atypical nevus. So, that's that. Go on. There's other good stuff here. Okay, so this came out as a sub Q mass. Ashley, you want to start us out? Sure, well, in terms of calcification, it looks like a cystic structure. Yeah, it looks like a cystic structure. It's uh, proliferating, um, similar to like the proliferating pyrosis. Yeah, kind of like a proliferating pilar. Maybe viral changes on one side too. Yeah, exactly. So if you took high power here, you have coarse hypergranulosis, you have round perikeratosis, looks pretty warty. You even have a few coilocytes. So where proliferating pilar cyst meets wart, what is it? Fibrous. Yeah, or a veruca cyst. So Veruca cysts start in hair follicles or sweat ducts, and they are HPV induced. And if they're, this has a little bit of coilocytic atypia, but you can see high grade atypia, you can see bolenoid atypia, just as you can see in some warts. And then those go on to cystic squames. So if it's a good wart virus, it stays as a Veruca cyst, and if it's a bad wart virus, it goes on to cystic squamous cell carcinoma. <coughs> kind of spectrum of Veruca cyst. Okay. Tom, what do you see? Uh, look, uh, so I see a compact uh, sternum corneum, some edema underneath. The attenuated epidermis and a bit of inflammation underneath here. Wondering, wondering about um, a lichen sclerosis type pattern or just inflammatory with some cell death. Um, Can I ask you a question? Sure. How would I know if the recording is picking up volume here? It should, it should. I'm not seeing any green going up and down on the little thing. Um, if so now I see something green. Yeah, where where's the microphone? Right over here on this side. Should be. Should be okay. I think so. Okay, we'll just play back yeah. after and see. Okay, sorry about the distraction. Yeah. So. Uh, um, so compact stratum corneum, and then there's some edema or some pallor underneath here, and then there's some inflammation. So I, I'm gonna have to buy a power to. Okay. Look a little bit more. You need to buy a power. So, chock full of neutrophils. Um, so that makes LSNA less likely. Um, wondering, let's see. There's some, some big dead pink cells. Big dead pink cells. Yeah. And do you think those are epithelial or stromal in um, origin? Probably epithelial. Probably epithelial. And did they die a spongiotic death, a savat body type death, a ballooning degeneration death? 
I'd like to, well, not exactly sure what the, fits best. They're size wise. They're large. They're very large. They're so large. Ballooning degeneration. Ballooning probably. degeneration deaths, which suggest, and in fact, you can see a little nucleus left yeah. inside, right? So. So it could be uh, some sort of viral induced change. That would be my guess. And then which viral are more likely to be a ballooning degeneration? The, uh, the herpes viruses. Absolutely. So that puts this in a herpes group. So you well. can't make out any nuclear cytopathic effect because the nuclei are dead. But you can certainly make out that this was a viral blister predominantly ballooning degeneration, likely to be herpes group. Well done. This is just kind of a rapid fire. Some of the key viral things, and then we're going to go on to true. a little bit faded, but it will still serve our purposes just fine. Let's see. So <coughs> uh, thickened uh, orthokeratotic horn, and then uh, some hypergranulosis, and then these larger evacuated keratinocytes at the and the horn has a coarse basket weave. Coarse basket weave. Which I would associate with a wart. More like a flat wart. More like a flat wart. And the coarse hypergranulosis certainly goes with that. How about mm -hmm. these gray cells, these gray foamy cells? Is that the, um, the EDV change? That is exactly gray. what it is, EDV change. So epidermal dysplasia verisiformis change within a flat wart. It's very good. And then you have to look, if the patient looks like they have pityriasis rosea clinically, then it's probably inherited EDV. All right, so a little papule here. This looks like it comes from maybe dorsal skin. And then um, in the lower epidermis, you have a lot of these clear pale cells. Um, a lot of them just look like they're degenerating. There's a little bit of hypergranulosis as well associated with, sh with like the dull areas. Okay. Um, and you certainly have distinctly brown parakeratosis in cells that have a vacuole. So it is not the pycnotic, new shrinkle, sh crinkled mm -hmm. raisin of the shrink, shrunk and Shrinkled, shrinkled. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, reason of a nucleus that one would see in a cervical pap smear for a coilocyte. This is more of a cutaneous coilocyte where they often remain round or more commonly very large and gray with a vesicular nucleus. But what about all these red inclusions? Any kind of wart that you know of that has red inclusions that resembles an anthill on the palms and soles? It's like the miramecial. Miramecial warts, exactly. So HPV1, if it's not on palm or sole, then you don't really call it miramecia. You just call it a wart with HPV1 chain. If it's palm and sole and resembles an anthill, then you call it miramecia. Same thing. You know, it's just splitting hairs, basically. But those red inclusions are, are typical. Okay, well done. Move along faster, faster, faster. Okay. Looks like we have some focal degeneration, uh, possibly. Degeneration of the of the epidermis. Epidermis, correct. And the and pattern of the degeneration is? Um, some more 
ballooning. Or ballooning degeneration, which yes. would lead you to... Like herpes. A herpes group viral infection. Very good. And then is this a large area or a tiny <coughs> area? It's pretty, pretty focal. Yeah, pretty focal, kind of isolated area, which might make one think. Like um, HSV. And HSV tends to be grouped or <coughs> a solitary vesicle? Um, tends to be grouped. Tends to be grouped. What would be a solitary vesicle sitting like a dewdrop on a rose petal? Oh, um, varicella. Varicella, exactly. So it's a herpes virus, basically you know, ballooning degeneration in an isolated vesicle, suggests varicella. Unlike zoster, which has underlying vasculitis, you won't see that in primary varicella. Um, what we do <coughs> see, go, let's get a little higher here, you definitely see of the trio of multinucleation, molding, and margination of neutrophils, if you look in See, it's on the monitor. Let me bring the, the pointer in here. You see multinucleation, you see margination, peripheral margination of basophilic chromatin, and you see a little nuclear molding right in there. So you got all features. Okay. Nicely done. Okay, faster, faster, faster. Hard to go faster when it's not focused. Um, so you see a lot of wordy change. A lot of wordy change, and this is, you know, lots of clear wordy change. Suggests maybe you're even on a mucosal surface with that wordy change, the way it might look in an oral mucosa or a cervical mucosa. Let's see if we are. And this would often be like an HPV 6 or 11, maybe an 11 mucosal, mm -hmm. more like a laryngeal papilloma type of appearance with those prominent clear coilocytes. this one. <coughs> I mean, it again has kind of the warty type changes in the um, kind of granular layer. Clearing out of this one might be more along the lines of like a flat wart. Um, Absolutely. It has the coarse basket weave corneum. It has the hypergranulosis in the dells that is coarse. It doesn't particularly have round parakeratosis. Flat warts usually don't. It has coilocytes, and as most cutaneous coilocytes, the nuclei tend to be gray and vesicular, sometimes dark, but still round, not crenated like a cervical pap smear. That's good. First off, tell me about the vessels. <coughs> they look like they're infiltrated with neutrophils. With or without karyorectic debris and fibrin? Uh, let's say with. With. So you're telling me that, that you see like an, underlying vasculitis. an underlying vasculitis. And then what structures tend to go vertically north, south in skin? Air follicles, and is that one happy or necrotic? No one's sad. Okay, what gives you necrosis of hair follicle and vasculitis? Uh, zoster. Zoster, correct. So even without seeing the epidermal changes. Necrosis, follicular necrosis, or sebaceous gland necrosis with vasculitis equals zoster. Um, and then if you want to look at the surface, sure. Um, but the surface can be variable. In this, it looks more like an interface dermatitis. It could be confusing. 
but the combination of follicular necrosis, sebaceous gland necrosis with vasculitis, zoster, and the start. Nothing I can say beyond that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is sort of EDV. EDV ish. So again, you have the coarse basket weave corneum of a flatwort. You have a little bit of round parakeratosis. And then you have distinctly blue <coughs> cytoplasm cells of epidermal dysplasia versiformis. I think we kind of hit the key and critical things <laughs> out of that. Fox, the only thing I don't There were two other things I wanted to hit, and I probably made it. Okay. Are your reedy short and stubby? Or are they very much elongated? Um, they're, s they're elongated and slender. Yeah, elongated and slender, and there's granulation tissue. So this is probably a nodule with some associated acanthosis. And then focally, you see change within the epithelium. So are you looking at a condyloma here? Or? Uh, are condyloma <laughs> really usually skinny or? I guess they're more acanthotic. More acanthotic, yeah. Um, but I see pink things in the cytoplasm here. So what would give you granulation tissue, long, slender, reedy, and intracytoplasmic eosinophilic inclusion? I have a long slender reedy associated with syphilis, but I don't think that's what this is. Um, I don't know, sir. And intra, intracytoplasmic, cytoplasmic inclusion, anyone want to jump in? Or, yeah, barnyard pox of okay. some sort. So, or for Milker's nodule. So, um, barnyard pox, they go from the targetoid to the verrucous stage. This is kind of in between where it's going towards verrucous. You see lots of granulation tissue, lots of skinny elongated reedy, and then where you still see the epithelial change, there is ballooning degeneration and there are necrosis that may be single cell necrosis, but you see distinct intracytoplasmic pink viral inclusions. And that would be characteristic of a barnyard pox. Small pox less likely to give you the granulation tissue and elongation of breeding. Okay. Looks like a big condyloma or condy. So what makes it a condyloma? Location. So location would be a big um, you have a corneum that is compact and red, often with round parakeratosis, and then in the dells is where you typically make out the coilocytes, which may have crenated hyperchromatic nuclei, or they may be large vesicular and gray within a vacuole, and that absolutely would be typical for condyloma. If you do um, in situ hybridization for HPV, the only place that it's positive is where you have visible coilocytes. That's where your positivity is. Hmm. Okay. Let's go on to a true potpourri. So first years, we could be from any chapter whatsoever, just as in real life. Picture 
<laughs> okay, so Ashley, yeah. we're back to you. Yeah, so I'm seeing a predominantly dermal-wise with proliferation of a little bit of maybe background sclerosis, so traumatized nevus. So yeah, so it just nevus. looks like a nevus. Yeah. End of story. We're all done. And then there it looks more like a basal cell over there. It's a little more infiltrated. So it looks certainly paisley tied. <laughs> so what's your paisley tied differential? So you have a uh, morphiform basal cell, you have syringoma, desmoplastic trichoa F, and then you have uh, MAC. So MAC, desmoplastic trichoa F, mm -hmm. uh, morphiform BCC, and syringoma. Of those, um, what are you thinking with horn cyst, yeah. no retraction? Trichoa F would probably be my number one. And which of the paisley tie? has a strong association with collision with a benign melanocytic nevus. Trichoaf. Desmoplastic trichoaf in particular. So DTEs um, are in collision with a benign nevus. It's like a thousand times what chance and chance alone would predict. And who knows why, but it's, you they're know, friends. it's a very, they're friends. Exactly, that's it. They like to travel together. Very common and well described association. Okay. and some compact strand corium underneath sort of expanded fibrosis and sort of fibrin deposit. Fibrin, okay. So intensely staining fibrin, um, overlying acanthosis, adjacent a little vascular proliferation. What's your diagnosis? Um, I'm not quite to a diagnosis yet. A vertical column of fibrin. Oh, CNH. CNH, absolutely. So chondrodermatitis nodularis chronica helicis. Um, it should have names associated uh, with Frankenfurter <laughs> and something. Um, but it doesn't. So acanthosis <laughs> over a vertical column of intensely staining fibrin is Absolutely, chondrodermatitis nodularis chronica helicis. Okay, are you thinking a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, it's really big, so probably a bad thing. A bad thing. And what is the predominant color of this bad thing? Um, I want to say blue. Blue. And then what are the round, clear, round white things? So they're ducks. Ducks. <coughs> so what is blue with ducks at scan? Blue with ducks. So um, spike gland. So acrospiromas are red with ducts. What's with blue duct. with duct? Or sebaceous. Sebaceous. And you started out saying that this was bad. So, so what is bad sebaceous? Sebaceous carcinoma. You got it at scan. Correct. So blue with ducts, bad sebaceous, sebaceous carcinoma. This one almost looks like a cylindroma. Almost looks like a cylindroma. <laughs> so almost <laughs> that <laughs> that it may in fact be <laughs> may in fact be a cylindroma. <laughs> so a <laughs> jigsaw puzzle pattern each piece of the jigsaw puzzle surrounded by a red basal membrane zone. If you look at higher power, there is very little cytoplasm. It's all nucleus. It's composed of darker gray nuclei and paler gray nuclei. There are hyaline droplets of basement membrane material within the nests, which are the nests that appear a little more reddish but it's really a scan diagnosis of the jigsaw puzzle pattern. Very good. So 
Looks like we have a reticulated epidermis and uh, intermixed hair follicles. Yeah, so <coughs> if this is a normal hair follicle, and that's a normal hair follicle, tell me about all of these hair follicles. A little, um, I guess, out of proportion, like the inner, inner root sheath and the. So they look yeah. miniaturized. So over here, you're in the isthmus, where you see a keratinized inner root sheath, but at the same level here, you're down at the bulb of tiny little primordial hair germs, the right. primitive hair germs. So there are lots and lots of hair germs, which probably wouldn't be capable of producing a hair. So like androgenic alopecia? Um, no. Androgenic alopecia that starts right there and just goes to here. So this is the localized, so localized process that would be broad and bald. So nevus sebacea? Nevus sebacea is at what age? Um, early, before pre-pubertal. Exactly. So you don't have your sebaceous glands that are large. They're very small. You don't have your apocrine gland. So it's broad and bald, but not bumpy and bubbly when it's prepubertal. Other ways to approach the slide. Is this a normal, dull pink dermis, or is this a bright red dermis? Bright red. Bright red dermis. That's kid skin. Okay. So it looks like kid skin. And it's a broad, bald patch of kid skin with lined up little primordial hair germs that's nevus sebaceous. So how it differs from pattern alopecia is that these are really germs incapable of producing a hair. They're like primitive, like fetal hair germs. And it's localized. It's a localized patch that starts you know, right there. You can see the cutoff between normal hairs and these miniaturized hair germs. How is triangular alopecia? Triangular alopecia is miniaturization and short cycle of hair, so they're vellus hairs. Um, but vellus hairs produce a hair shaft, so they have all portions, whereas this is more primitive hair germ. But that is an excellent point. Triangular alopecia would be in the differential. Okay. How about this one? Um, so, looks like a sort of independent cucumbiotic process. Um, a serum crust, slight atypia in the epidermis. Atypia, so anastomosing bands of epithelium in the ep epidermis forming. You see um, some Swiss cheese, reedy structures telling you it's acanthotic, mm -hmm. anastomosing epidermal strands, and you commented on the atypia. So, what do you want to call it? Um, I would say maybe a squam in situ. Or yeah, squam in situ or Bowen's. Very good. Great job. Well done. <laughs> Excellent job. <laughs> Pass that easy button down. That was easy. Okay. Um, <coughs> all right, so we have probably some sort of acral skin. Um, some kind of acral skin. With psoriasiform hyperplasia, the okay. epidermis, and you kind of have that, you know, dilated dermal papilla look, um, uh, you know, with the vasculature up, uh, rising up. But I'm not seeing much in the way of neutrophils in the horn or the, I'm just looking around to see. Agree. What do you see here in the epidermis? Like you kind of point to a um, little bit of white space around the spot. Okay, so, so a little bit of sponge. A yeah. little bit of spongiosis. 
So yeah. sort of a subacute to yeah. chronic dermatitis, which is exactly where I would go with this. Um, what are you, what two diagnoses are you most likely to miss most often in your career? Probably tinea. Tinea and scabies, mm -hmm. right, are the two. This was tinea. Okay. So what does it look like? Looks like subacute spongiotic dermatitis. Don't forget to look for hyphae in okay. every case of subacute spongiotic. Gotcha. It has a little layered corneum, but certainly not of the usual pattern of basket weave on top of red. Right. But just, you know, what, what things will make a fool of you in your career? KOH is your friend. The minute you are too smart to need to do KOHs, you will start missing tinea. And, um, <laughs> and scabies will make a fool of you many, many times. And mm -hmm. the other one is PRP, where you will say it's eczematous and, um, you know, it's a refractory hand eczema right at the time where the person just blossoms into a PRP erythroderma just in time for Grant Browns where you brought them for a management discussion. Um, dermatomyositis will do that too. Um, you know, bloom just in time to make you look like a fool. All right, so uh, papillomatosis, this looks like kind of a discrete papule starts and stops, um, compact orthokeratosis. And where is the hypergranulosis? At the, uh, uh, the, uh, And within each follicle, right? And is it like that at the periphery or smack dead in the center of the lesion? <coughs> Pretty much in the center. In the center of the lesion. So in things like perigo, you tend to see that at the periphery of the lesion. This is smack dead in the center of the lesion. We also have some area where the epithelium looks like this. And what are all those little gray fibers in there? Mm, can't tell from this power. <laughs> <laughs> the what, what are these gray fibers there? It could be elastic fibers. Elastic, and so they're the same here. Mm. So what's elastic doing trapped in the middle of that? Transiting through. Yeah, or this proliferation, rather than pushing its way into the dermis, is pulling its way into the dermis along elastic fibers. So this is the early stage of A, anyone? Keratoacanthoma. This is what they look like when they're just starting. So KAs start with a little pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia of the hair follicles, hypergranulosis at each hair follicle. They start to pull their way along elastic fibers. So you see elastic trapping. You have early neutrophilic microabscess. It's starting to get a little glassy. And this is just at the point where it's ready to explode into a crater-like lesion. So this is very typical early keratoacanthoma. <coughs> Understand. Okay. But what do you see? So that part looks like there's kind of that <clears throat> like nutritional deficiency change look in the epidermis. Okay, let's, or let's, let's go back to scan. Do you think this, what do you think the structure was? I guess a cyst. So Is it nutritional deficiency within a cyst or pink? No, I'm sorry, that's just uh, geographically thrown off. Uh, I'm sorry, a geographic <laughs> turn a major <laughs> geographic turn off. So could I that know. be like SIBO, SIBOcytes? Like SIBOcytes Maybe in the like wall of something that is so kind of pink and dead, so is that a system? Sorry for my dumbness. Yeah, it's just, it's like all 
And again, I encourage you, mistakes are wonderful. Make every mistake you possibly can make in this room so you don't make it in the big room where you go to take the exam. It's definitely been my approach to residency. I get them all in the system. <laughs> Not a bad approach. <laughs> 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 uh, this is a cystic structure in the dermis. So a structure, and what kind of structure? Did you say cystic? I said cystic. You said cystic. You said cystic. cystic. Perfect. I Beautiful. It looks like it has keratinous debris in it. I can't honestly search all this layer if there's a granular layer, but I'm assuming based on debris there is. Um, and is it just a thin wall, or th is this more of a, a tumor one. that happens to have cystic degeneration? Oh, I guess tumor that has cystic degeneration. And is the tumor, is it all blue or does it have pink cytoplasm? It has pink cytoplasm. And then it has some tiny little white circles. Some ductal structures as well. So what would be a pink dermal tumor with ducts that undergoes cystic change? Acrospiroma. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So blue with duct, sebaceous. Pink with duct, acrospiroma. Which is your whole poroma, hydradenoma group? Okay. So, Katie, what do you think? Definitely a compact form. Definitely a compact form. It doesn't really have doesn't have quite the layered look of tinea, but do you have a little red layer here? Yeah, I'd want to stain it for sure. And it was stained positive for tinea. Well done, pass that easy button. Yeah. So <laughs> normal horn over compact red horn, you have that to was easy. You have to think <laughs> of the possibility yeah. of tinea yeah. as you <laughs> did. <laughs> you saved the page by Looks like a JXG. What if the patient's not J? And just an XG. Okay, so xanthogranuloma, and you are making out here two ton giant cells, a wreath, giant cell lipidized peripheral to the wreath. And they tend to be at, at the superficial and the deepest part. So at the periphery of the nodule is where you tend to find the two ton giant cells. So we have a tumor composed of xanthomatous um, cells with some of the similar ring giant cells. In fact, so similar that <laughs> probably the same diagnosis. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> <Can't just park>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've been having trouble. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so there probably was a cyst. Probably was like a cyst. There's and now some. what's happening in the wall of this cyst? Um, there's some acanthosis, and um, is there, there? Yeah, so it's starting to proliferate. Proliferate. And it has abrupt keratinization and calcification, so. So is that just the follicular infundibular? So, um, more like what some people call isthmus catagen or pilar, so proliferating papillomal or pilar cysts. I think this is a good one. In fact, this is a great one. The pilometricoma. Okay, so pilometricomas have rolls and scrolls pattern. Is this a roll and scroll pattern or is this an anastomosing network of ducts surrounding areas of connective tissue? I'll go with 
the second choice. The second choice is good. And then within the ducts, you see pink sweat. Mm -hmm. So this is a Shvedi tumor, right? And what kind of Shvedi tumor has an anastomosing pattern of ducts surrounding connective tissue? In some areas, the connective tissue is steel gray. And in other areas, there is fat as well as collagen. So it is mixed. They yeah, are mixed. <laughs> a mixed tumor or chondroid seringoma of the branching alveolar type. As opposed to the small tubular type where the ducts look more like seringomas. Or seringomata. Okay. Alright, so it looks like we have um, Acanthosis, yep. overlying compact hyperkeratosis. Yep. A little bit of spongiosis, and then what's in the corneal? Mm. Let's see what that's broadcasting uh, well. Okay, go ahead. What's in the corneal? I'm just trying to make out what that could be. Doesn't really look like. What news. direction are they going? Um, parallel or like horizontal? Horizontal or ver or distinctly distinctly vertical? Um, distinctly vertical. I would <laughs> agree with you. Distinctly <laughs> vertical. So that's your IV specific. <laughs> <laughs> In my field, horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so. As you said, distinctly vertical right. hyphal structures, which suggests? Like tinea. So tinea swims and mm. candida dives. Mm. Candida. Okay. So tinea tends to be horizontal in that layered corneum. So tinea, you usually have red, compact red corneum on top of basket or below basket weave. And it's right in that horizontal plane of that compact red that you have horizontally oriented hyphae. Okay. So tinea swims, candida dives vertically. Okay. Tinea swims, candida dives. So this is diving candida vertical. What if you have something that's finer than that? So um, it's very, very delicate, definitely filamentous bacterial rather than fungal hyphae, but also vertical on acral skin or intertriginous skin, more likely. Erythrasma. Yeah, so erythrasma has that same pattern of vertical things, but it's intertriginous, usually skin and um, is um, much finer than a hyphal structure. So it's filamentous bacterial strand. And then on acral skin, pitted keratolysis can have that pattern. Um, so you have a very acanthotic epidermis, possibly on acral skin. Um, Regular to me. Is that a coronal knot? It most certainly is. Poro. Remember, center of poro can look like anything. Yeah. It can be atypical, it can be atrophic, it can be lichenoid, it can be psoriasiform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look at the edge for that coronoid lamella. Probably, we're going to jump to the fellows. So Ashley or Tom, you know, this obviously, this is not a trick. So what do you think? It looks like basil. It looks like basil. Okay. <laughs> so now the question is, what did... I'm not sure we're going to see enough of it in this section. 
if this base will arose in something that like is this horizontally going on forever. See how that looks like a flickered tribulum, but there's mm -hmm. acanthosis around it. If this, like garlands, went on TFI? TFI, tumor of the flicker and tribulum, which can be advised to, to basal cells. So, okay. Let's get Ooh, this is good. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wardy disc here, Tony. Wardy D. Boom. Well done. <laughs> Pass the right easy button. Right. Oh, we're just give them that. Wardy that's right next to it. That was easy. <laughs> so that's exactly what it is. So Wardy disc keratoma. <laughs> so Wardy disc keratoma can be crateriform or can look like an expanded hair follicle. Has acanthalytic disc keratosis, giving rise to corons, and then villi at the base, and so very typical Wardy disc keratoma. <laughs> so we'll see kind of like some parakeratosis Alternating. Parakeratosis alternating. Newts on top of para. <coughs> so what are you thinking? Uh, so like, could be like a fake psoriasis? Yeah, it could be like psoriasis, 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 or psoriasis. Mm -hmm. um, the other, <laughs> what was the second <laughs> <word? laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Well <laughs> done. <laughs> Okay, so other things, um, P. tinium, Patago candida, subderm syphilis, um, give you newts in the horn, but do not give you alternating newts and parakeratosis, which would be psoriasis. <coughs> End of story. Looks like a mixed tumor. Branching alveolar pattern, connective tissue in between, much of it with a steel gray sulfated mucin appearance, a chondroitin sulfate <coughs> type of appearance. So you're absolutely correct. Mixed tumor of skin. <coughs> We've got five minutes remaining, so we ought to be able to do 40 or 50 slides. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, looks like a poor whiner or the superficial portion of a um, punctum of a cyst can be either way. And there is a whole history here which I cannot read. It is the smallest type in the history of mankind. Oh my goodness. Story on the slide. Male with facial lesions, changes seen in disorders with follicular occlusion, such as HS, acne, colobata, acne, tumor, and There you go. So you totally have it. It's a story that's not what I put at all. <laughs> 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 that's it's the patient's entire medical record printed <laughs> on the slide. <laughs> Nevis, correct. So if it is a lymphoid band that goes throughout the lesion, it is most likely halonevis. All mixing together like people mingling at a cocktail party.
Okay, so cell an adenoid, and for some reason, people always choke on adenoid BCC. They want to turn it into some other kind of adnexal carcinoma, but um, just pools of mucin within the basal cell giving it an adenoid appearance. So adenoid BCC. Time. Looks like a skin tag. <laughs> um, but if you're, you're on fire, um, if in a black <laughs> boy, <laughs> uh, <laughs> a flash void array on the limb girdle area, is there a new stuff on the top of Dosis, superficialis of Hoffman and Zarelli. Oh, Outstanding! That's a match. That's a match. Well, okay. All right. Uh, broad shave looks like a melanocytic proliferation. Okay, so you're a clinician. And you just took this biopsy. What are you after? Uh, probably after MIS. Nothing else. Why else so would you have taken this broad a piece? Right? Um, um, so it's also it's inked, so it's possible this was probably taken off as a broad saucerization. But you can see the nests. Um, the pattern varies from side to side. The nests are not all similar in size and shape, not all equidistant. They have odd shapes, they're not round to oval, they have little arms and things. They are not just at the tips and sides of reedy, but within the reedy there's consumption of the epidermis where they come up to the top, there's intraepidermal nesting. So for all those reasons, not good. The only thing I don't see here is I don't see good red flat bottom fibrosis. Um, but look at the size of the nest. They vary dramatically in size and shape. There's adnexal extension, so all of those things, areas where non-nested melanocytes predominate over nests. So we're going to go over with site two, very good. And we are on track to have done almost 50 slides. Wow, awesome. good for us. <laughs> but you're, you're getting, we're getting a little farther each time with both Kodachromes and with glass. Um, so a little dermal process here, a couple different like blue looking islands with ducks um, so um, blue with ducks you normally think of sebaceous but in this case I see red highland droplets all through it um, so red highland droplets all through it and it's composed of darker pink or darker blue cells and paler blue cells and then Peppered with jet black lymphocytes. So a spiroadenoma. A spiroadenoma, oh, very good. <coughs> we never had to see the black. Back on the <laughs> Superficial and deep infiltrate. Um, Superficial and deep infiltrate, and what direction is the infiltrate going? Vertically. Vertically. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new world. <laughs> it's actually diagonal on mine. <laughs> so vertical columns of lymphs within the dermis. Your diagnosis is lupus. Lupus done. Okay, so vertical columns of limbs. <laughs> <laughs> vertical columns of limbs, lupus. Also, see how it's there's a little steel gray bluish between the collagen. That's all the mucin. So when you see that mucinous stuff, that's not hard. The diagnosis is it's not hard. But it's what you said, kindergarten. Um, okay, what else are we going to do? Um, acanthalysis, 
acantholysis and just acantholysis, or are they red and round? Uh, red and round. So that it is not just acantholysis, but um, acantholytic, acantholytic dyskeratosis. dyskeratosis. And you see villi here. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking like a Grover's or... Yeah, Grover's, Darius, Warty dyskeratoma, you just need to know the history. Dermatofibroma. Dermatofibroma. With a basal cell? No. <laughs> Follicular induction. Follicular induction overlying a dermatofibroma. Well done. We are done. Hit the easy button. Time for questions. That was easy.